Hello, I'm Michael from Trike Bike. This short video is going to take you through the assembly process of one of our standard 24-inch aluminium trikes. When your bike arrives, it'll come in two boxes. One large box, as you see here, for all of the trike parts, and a second box, which will contain the baskets and also the assembly instructions. It's really important to take the time to read the assembly instructions because this will give you all of the hints and tips you need to safely and professionally assemble your trike. Okay, we've taken about 10 minutes to unpack the trike and I've laid it all out on the floor, we removed all of the protective bubble wrap. One box that it comes with is all the accessory parts and you can see these on the bench. It includes things like the light, the pedals, the seat post, the chain. The most important bag is this bag here of all the different hardware. It's really important that you don't lose any of these parts. So I always empty them straight into a little ice cream container so they don't get lost. On our internet site, we have a photograph of each nut and bolt. So you'll see, for example, a photograph of this, of this bolt and nut, washer, assembly, and it will tell you exactly where it goes. Okay, the first part we start with is a rear axle assembly, but one of the most important things is assembling the bike comfortably. I use a table to do mine, you may just use the ground, but one of the easiest things is to support the rear axle assembly as I've got here, using just a couple of car jacks. I find it makes the process just so much easier. Step one, rear assembly. We now need to join the main frame assembly, which is here, to the main axle. And all you do is just slide them into place like this and line up the bolt holes. There's six bolts that hold on the rear axle assembly to the frame. Okay, I've loosely fitted these screws to both sides of the bike and it's really important to know that these two screws on the left hand side, that's the left hand side when you're sitting on the bike, are already in place. So all we need to do to these is add the washer and the nut. The most critical part of putting this bike together is to make sure that the rear axle is at perfect right angles to the main frame. If you have it skew if, then the trike will always go sideways, it'll crab down the road. So we need to make sure it's at perfect right angles. The best way to do this is to lift the trike up 
and allow gravity to help you. So I'm going to roll the trike up into this position. I've got the, the frame balanced and I'm just going to wiggle it and push down. I'm going to make sure that this side is the same as that side by pushing down and using a 17mm socket or open-ended spanner I'm just going to lightly tighten one bolt on one side. I'm going to go back over to this side and tighten the front bolt. At the same time I'm pulling down. Now what will happen if you do all three on one side, so say we did three on the back side, it's going to pull the trike sideways. That's why you just need to do a little bit at a time. So I've got this front bolt fairly tight now. I'll go back onto this side, just finish tightening. I can put the trike back down onto the bench and now I can go through and tighten bolts two and three, four and five. Okay, I've assembled the rear axle assembly to the main frame. You've got to remember this is not a dozer or something heavy equipment, so don't over tighten things, otherwise you could break the nuts and bolts. Just do them up firmly and then just a little bit more. Next stage is fitting the front wheel. The reason I do it now is I want to get the bike all nice and level. So lift up the front frame, slide it under, and you'll see there's a couple of washers on each side. One's a safety washer and the other is a normal washer. We'll explain what they do a little bit later. Now I have the bike in this position. It's now level and in a riding attitude. I'll now fit the seat post. The seat post goes into the top of the frame stem and there's a special clamp, which we'll show you more detail on how to fit. Okay, we're going to fit our seat clamp into position. Different batches of bikes have different clamps, so you just need to make sure you're following the assembly instructions for the clamp that you have. This one here is an aluminium clamp. It's got a small ring in one side of it, so that remains at the top. So what we do is we slide this over the top. Sometimes they can be a di bit difficult to get on, so just give it a light tap with a piece of wood. Another thing, a, a really important thing to know, is that a lot of people riding trikes are heavier weight, 120, 130 kilos, are doing it for fitness. Sometimes this seat clamp just doesn't have enough forced to hold the seat post quite, uh, tightly. So what I always do, using a normal hacksaw, is just come around and I put a slot in the front here. It's already got a good slot in the back, but I just do another one in the front. You only need to go down the depth of the blade. And what that does, it puts more pressure onto the seat post. So I'm going to tap this into place. That's tapped into place. I can put our seat post in. I need to tighten the knurled knob on the back here so everything's firm and then pull back on the lever. That was a little bit easy so I'm going to loosen it off, tighten the knurled knob a little bit more. Now come back. That's nice and tight. That seat post will never slip now with someone even 150 kilos. We're now going to fit the seat to the seat post. You'll see the seat post is tapered. So it's important not to let the seat drop all the way down. If you let it do that, it will only clamp on the very bottom section and you won't get a good grip and the seat will be forever turning. So you need to lift it up a little bit and get it in the right position. We need to get the angle correct. You don't want the seat pointing upwards or downwards because it'll be uncomfortable. We want it to be nice and level. And using a 13mm spanner, we need to tighten a little bit on each side. until the seat is firmly on the bike.
Okay, we've just put in the handlebar stem and also adjusted the handlebars. I've kept everything fairly loose for the moment because we need to do a final adjustment when everything's ready. We've got three cables on the bike. One is attached to the front wheel for the front brakes. And we've got two other cables. One is for the back brakes and one is for the gears. You can tell the difference because the back brake cable is a lot thicker and it's got this knob on the end. The gear change cable is much thinner and it's got a very, very small knob on the end. Okay, what we're going to do now is to feed the gear change cable through the gear change unit on the handlebars. I very carefully removed the inner and the outer cables. This nipple, the one with the nipple on the end, goes in this position. The cable goes through the change unit and then down to the rear gears. We need to make sure that the gear change selector is in position six and I can start to feed it through. Sometimes it takes a couple of goes to get it through. That time was just absolutely straight through, which is not always the way it happens. Sometimes you've got to poke it a few times to get it through. Once it comes through, we can feed it back into the cable and just gently feed it through. It's really important that this cable does not get any kinks or sharp bends because that will make changing the gears very, very difficult. We pull it all the way through until this nipple is held firmly in the gear change unit. We'll slide the outer cable up, put it into the receptacle at the end, and then we can start to feed it back through the bike. So we do that. Anything on the right handlebar side goes down the left side of the bike. So I can start feeding it through these little collars, which are designed to hold the cables in place. Okay, once down the bottom here, it's always good if you have it uh, un untangled so it doesn't get tangled up in everything. Making a mess here, let me just turn that around. Okay, once we get down the bottom, we then change the side. So we're going down the left-hand side here, now we go down the right-hand side. So we cross over in the bottom, through this collar, there's one more on top of the axle nuts, and we just pull through about 250 mil of cable, and that's where we can leave it for now. All right, I'm just going to connect the brakes up. This can be something which gives some people a lot of trouble, but if you look very, very closely, you can see the little receptacle here for the cable nipple. The cable needs to go into that, and it also needs to thread through this adjuster here. There's two parts to this adjuster and both of them have a small slot which will enable you to fit the cable into. So I'll just slide that back up in and I'll carefully position the cable through that slot now into the brake cable adjuster. So you can see now that everything's working correctly and I'll just give half a turn there and now the cable can't fall out. So now it's in position correctly and that's it. That's all that's involved in hooking up the front and back brake cables. Okay, here we are with the chain, and this is something which gives people a little bit of problem sometimes, but if you have the right tools and know how to do it, it's re really quite easy. Off eBay, you can buy a chain tool for about $5, or you can use a normal pair of pliers and a washer to get the same result. Much easier, however, to use the chain tool, so I'd recommend buying one. Okay, the chain is joined by basically forcing this pin through this link. So to get them together, just gently twist them together like that. Now we're actually ready to drive the pin through. 
So if we're using the chain tool, we connect that up and wind the pin into position. If we're using pliers, we can just gently squeeze like this and pull the pin in. And when you get to the other side, you want to have a little bit of the pin coming out. And that's why we use this washer. You put the washer in position and then clamp everything with the pliers and that will enable you to put the pin into the correct place. Importantly, when the chain is connected, it will actually make this link very, very tight because you put a lot of pressure on there to squeeze it together. So what I always do when it's on the bike is, when everything's together, feel that link and it will be very, very stiff. So what you do is you twist the chain that way and that way a couple of times and then you'll feel that the chain is like any other link in the bike. Okay, we now need to adjust the gear cluster. First of all, we need to make sure that this collar on the right hand side of the bike is firmly up against the bearing. At the moment, there's a gap of about two millimetres. I'm just going to gently tap it with a rubber hammer. It's now across, touching the bearing. The next adjustment we need to do is have a look at this gear cluster. I'm just going to move the chain out of the road. There needs to be a gap between the frame and the gear cluster of about the thickness of a piece of paper. We can adjust the distance on the shaft using the Allen key on the back of the gear cluster. We now need to adjust the travel limits of the chain, so from the bottom cog up to the top cog. If you don't adjust the limits then you won't be able to use all of your gears. We adjust the limits by just moving the pedal. We can see now the, gear, the chain is not going down onto the lowest gear. I'm going to gently push the derailleur across to check its upward limit. Okay, we can see there it's not quite going onto the top gear. So we need to make adjustments to the upper and lower travel limits of the gear cluster. We do that by using the adjustment screws here which are labelled L for low and H for high. Sometimes it's a little bit difficult to get a screwdriver into this location but you can actually push the derailleur up or down which will assist you in getting the, the right angle to get a screwdriver in to make an adjustment. Okay, now we have the correct travel limits because we can move up and down between the gears quite easily. 
and now we need to adjust the cable. So let the bike just go back into low gear. We can pull the cable through that we brought through earlier and feed it through into the duralia. Pull it down nice and tight. We need to go up onto the handlebars and check that the cable is seated properly and we need to make sure that it's in gear number six, which is the low gear. Okay, I've checked on the handlebar that we're in the correct gear. Now I'm going to connect the cable to the duralia using a nine millimeter socket in this case. I'm going to pull everything through, position the cable using pliers. I'm just going to pull it a little bit tight. Whoop, I've just jumped out, so I'll pull it tight and tighten up the cable clamp. When you're doing this, you'll see the duralia move. Just hold it with your hand so you don't overstress the duralia. Now, walking front. Now we can go up to the handlebars and just check that it's working. So I'm going up a gear. Now you can see it jumped a few times to go up, but now it seems to be going okay. We'll go up another one, up, up, and we're not getting up into the final gear there. We should be jumping up. You can hear it grating as it goes through. So that means one of two things. One, we haven't got the travel limit set correctly, or we need to adjust the cable. We can adjust the cable down here by turning this knurled knob, which will actually either shorten the cable or make the cable longer. In this case, we need to make the cable longer for the chain to get up onto the top gear. Okay, now we have the basket fitted to the bike, the next step is to fit the rear wheels. There is a difference between this left side and the right side. The right side is the drive wheel. That's the one that you use for all your braking and acceleration. The drive wheel has a collar which is permanently attached to the rear axle. How do we know which wheel goes on which side? Well this wheel has a bearing on both sides, so that is the left hand side. We'll put that down. This has a bearing on one side and the drive area on the other. So this is the right hand wheel. To fit it, we simply take off the dome nut, the normal nut, and the two washers. And we need to slide the wheel on the shaft so we're lining up this cutout in here with the drive section of the collar. 
Okay, it's on. We're going to fit our washer, our nut and our dome nut. But really importantly, these need to stay on the bike for safety. So I always use a little bit of Loctite. Here we are using Loctite. This is Loctite number 272, which is ideal for this application. You don't need much of Loctite. A lot of people use too much. You only really need about as much as on the top of a match head. First nut goes on. We need to do this one up firmly. So grab the rear wheel and tighten it up. You may hear the odd little click or crunch as you're doing that, that's okay. We don't have it so it's really driven on but we want to have it firm. Now we use a little bit more Loctite for the outer nut. So again, about as much as you would see on the top of a match head. We put the dome nut on. Now the dome nut is important because it acts as a locking nut. So we need to lock the two of them together. So we now need to lock one nut against the other. Put a fair bit of force on it. Okay, that's right. We're now off to do the other side. Okay, now we're going to fit the left-hand wheel. We've got one washer left over from the right-hand side because it had two washers and we're only using one. We use it on the left-hand side. So we'll take off the dome nut, then the locking nut. Then we have a couple of washers and a little spacer collar. Now what I always do now is put on one of the washers first. That goes up against the bearing. Put on the spacer washer another washer. Now we can put on our rear tyre and they have two directions. If you look at the tread you want it to match the tread direction on the other side. If you put it on in the wrong direction it really doesn't make any difference but we always follow the standards. Final washer, your locking nut. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to temporarily fit that without Loctite to it just so we can move all of the drive assembly over correctly. So to do this you will need to grab the right hand wheel, that's it, I've just done it up just, just gently so everything's now positioned correctly, I can come back and put some Loctite. That's got it. Now you just want this one to be firm. You don't want it to be over tight. Now we'll put some more Loctite and the dome nut. And we do the same as we did on the other side by locking the two of them together. Okay, now we come to fitting the front mudguard. Once you get these screws into place, just leave them loose for now until we've got the whole assembly together. We're going to fit the mudguard to the bike. So we come up to this nut on the back here. It's a 10 mil. Takes a few turns to get off. We can slide the mudguard through from behind and into position. Washer back on and the nut back in place.
We're now going to fit the basket. Some brackets here which hold the wire frame so we come through from the back. We'll just put it temporarily in place. Don't tighten anything up. We'll now spread the, the clip, go into the basket, do the same to the bottom. Again, leave everything loose until we've got it in final place. Okay, we leave everything loose on the basket for the final assembly. The first thing we do is remove the nut and then behind that is a normal flat washer. We remove that. And as I said in the start of the assembly video, there is a special washer which goes onto the front wheel. This holds the wheel onto the bike, so heaven forbid you're doing wheel stands or something, your front wheel won't fall out. So the correct assembly is the special washer to start with and then the basket, then the mud guard, then the flat washer and then the special nut. We do exactly the same on the other side. Okay, now we have the front wheel assembly completed. We now need to tighten up the basket. Just make sure all the brackets are centralised. Using a Phillips head screwdriver and an 8mm spanner or tube socket as we've got here, we can just carefully tighten the basket. Again, moderation, don't over tighten it too tight. You just want it to be firm because we're not assembling a, uh, a Caterpillar dozer.
Okay, I fitted the reflectors, now the mud guards. Very important that you leave both of these screws loose until they're on the bike for final alignment and adjustment. As I mentioned earlier, we leave everything loose on the mudguard before we fit it into place. We go over the wheel and we go on the outside of this bracket. If you go on this side, they'll be forever sliding up and down. We go on this side, we put through the large 10 millimeter bolt, hold it with your fingers. Sometimes you've got to rotate the wheel to get access to it. And washer and lock nut go on the back. Again, just do everything up, just finger tight for the final assembly. If your fingers aren't quite long enough to get through the spokes, just use a screwdriver. Okay, we need to do these nuts up fairly tight. You can either use a screwdriver or, as I prefer, a socket spanner and a 10mm um, ratchet on the back. Now it's important that these are in the correct position and to correctly position them, you try and push them down all the way. You won't get down all the way, but just try and you do them up fairly firmly. Okay, that's nice and firm. I'm going to go around behind the bike. I'll position the spokes so I can get through with my socket spanner. I'm pushing down and I'll tighten up this side. You may see that the mudguard is not aligned correctly during this process, but as we start to tighten them, everything will fall into place and we can see the mudguard now moving into the correct position. Okay, don't be afraid, this is lined up perfectly, but, and they usually do, but don't be afraid if you need to, to give it a bit of a bend. You're not going to break anything off the bike as you do that. Remember earlier I said to leave the mudguards loose. This is so you can do any final adjustment that you need to. So we can tighten up both of the screws on this end and a quick walkthrough. The same again on this end. And if you need to adjust the level of the mud guards, you've still got the ability to move them. It's, it takes a bit of force to move them, but you can still move them to get them into position. There are two final things we do to the wheels. We need to fit the reflectors first. So basically directly opposite the valve stem. We come in from the middle of the wheel, down on the spoke, put in the little plastic locking collar using a nice large flat bladed screwdriver. Just turn it. Don't turn too hard otherwise you'll break the plastic part off. So you just put it in firmly and that's in place. And the final thing we do is we fill the tyres with air and I always recommend about 60 pounds front and rear.
okay, we have two final things to do. Trike bike is basically assembled, but we want to go through and just check all the nuts and bolts throughout to make sure everything is done up correctly and functioning properly. We want to make sure the bike is safe to ride. My favourite part of putting a trike bike together is going for a test ride, and that's it. Once you've test ridden it, made any final adjustments, you should be provided with years of enjoyment out of your trike. For maintenance, just give it a spray every now and again with a little bit of WD-40, perhaps once every three months if you live near a salty environment like near the coast. Anyway, any questions at all, do not hesitate to contact us, either through the website, using email, or through our telephone. Anyway, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed our short little movie and have fun with your trike bike.